Just Latasha, and I am giving you a rainy Monday here in NYC. Broken bougie, my little China woman robe because I am physically not feeling well today. Um, and I thank you all for tuning into my latest videos about my personal story um, and relating to mental health and really trying to reach out to anyone who may be going through a certain time right now but I'm still going to be checking in on Insecure because it's something that makes me happy I am so appreciative of Issa Rae's work her existence the existence of her art because she is here it opens up doors for women like me black women like me a filmmaker a comedy writer a, a vlogger an entertainer she's opening doors that I dream of getting into one day and because she's in that lane and in the spotlight it it only helps women like me so I fully indulge in Insecure I'm going to keep indulging in Insecure and be right here every week after a new episode to dig in and digest so shall we I'm gonna change things up I usually uh, start with Issa but Lawrence has got me into my feelings this week he's got me so mad and so frustrated only because he made he made me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. See, he misled me. Yes, Lawrence is a fuckboy. I, I, I said he wasn't before. I wrote an article on Medium saying that he wasn't a fuckboy and here's why. But if you actually go to my article and read why Lawrence is, isn't a fuckboy, where I divided what a fuckboy is and what a fuckboy does compared to that of Lawrence, they didn't match at the time. But now Lawrence has crossed over into fuckboy land. And so now he's a fuckboy. Why? So let's just start with what Lawrence is doing this week. Um, we finally get to see Lawrence at his job. You know, he's been on that bouch for five years. He was making Issa unhappy with his lackadaisy attitude. I'm going to get there one day and not really moving to Best Buy, which is unimpressive if we're being honest. And now he's finally settled into his engineering computer tech career that he's always wanted. And this is a very casual and too friendly environment everyone's talking about who hooked up with who blowing up each other's business come drink with us after work Lawrence you was invited to Tasha's barbecue last week so you had the options of going to either Tasha's barbecue which you could have declined well in advance knowing knowing that you ain't want nothing serious to Tasha if you're meeting a woman's family doing her and her family favors that's pretty intimate that's an intimate space to not be taking somebody seriously bruh so you knew from the get that this happened to me on the same day as Tasha's barbecue. You could have called Tasha right after the work day and been like, look, something came up. I'm actually not going to make it. And this is what I was saying about fuckboys, that they mislead a woman. They invest a, a space and a time that's way more into it than just sleeping together. And misleading her into thinking that this will be something more knowing they just want to fuck. And when Tasha finally curses yo ass out, Lawrence, telling you, you pretended to be a good guy just so you can get what you want. You could have said from jump what it is. Because the thing is, I already know what it is. But here's the moves that you made to make me believe otherwise. Why am I in my feelings? Because I dated somebody like this earlier this year. And this, you could have just been real. Y'all remember that video of little mama crying? Not, she wasn't crying. Um... That was in the breakfast club. Little mama was in her phone and she was making a video being like, why do y'all, why do y'all niggas play with my heart? Don't do that. Like you knew you just wanted to be here and sleep with me and not take nothing serious. So why pretend like, don't play with my heart. And little mom looks so cute. Come, Y'all fuck boys. Oh my God. Oh, that is the most frustrating thing that as adults, we are asking you just communicate, but y'all lie or y'all do other shit. To, so, cause you know the answer might be no. So what do I have to act like? What do I have to pretend to be so you will keep your, your, your access, your vaginal access and maybe more to me? How do I have to lie to you to get what I want from you? Oh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And shout out to Tasha for saying fuck niggas so the whites will leave us alone. You know how they just, they see our culture, they take it, they, they suck from its nipple to feed its belly and gives us nothing in return but a saggy titty and 
and and in remembrance of the past of what once was ours. Remember that? The shout outs are saying fuck niggas, you now the whites can't say it. You anyway, we see Lawrence and Tasha open up in the bed and she ain't dressed to have sex. She dressed real regular. You finally get comfortable with your dude. This is somebody I'm moving forward with. He's been around. He about to come to the family function. Like he's here. You're not just sleeping with him and you got to look cute and get the panties and a bra matching or what shave up or whatever happened. Her hair, right now, Tasha might be a little hairy on the leg and that's okay. A little spotty in the armpit and that is okay, right? Because she's real comfortable with Lawrence and she's trying to have this conversation. He's barely listening. She says the name Shanice. This is a name that he's supposed to know by now. She's obviously like, I told you about this girl. Do you need flashcards? I told you about this girl plenty of times. You still don't know who I'm talking about? Like, are you listening? And he just tries to move for sex. And when he can't get sex, you see that that disappointment settle in. If that's what you wanted from the beginning, so you confuse me as an audience member, you confuse Tasha as a love interest, you were just moving funny and acting like you wanted more, but really, when the sex ain't there, neither are you. The only reason why he goes to this work function is because the girls hints that he can get some more ass. Look, she slept with him over there. She didn't even like it. Oh, we just be getting drunk and a hookup might happen. You should come through. You would be hot. Like, you would be hot. Like, they tell him that he would be sexually desired if he comes to here. So guess where he's going? Tasha, been there, done that, bored. Uh... I'm gonna go see what this work function about because he thinks he can get, even when you see the waitress comes up, she's like, you about to leave? Damn, that's too bad. His ass stays quick. Oh, you might fuck? I guess it's where I need to be. Fuck boy. Fuck, fuck boy. Fuck boy. Um, secondly, I want to get to Molly. Now, Molly is the character I most relate to. In my last video, I was like, she has to be a Virgo. She has to, has to, has to be a Virgo. She has to be. Um, she's, always critiquing, always judging, always with a plan, very analytical, um, get judgy, but when it's time to like judge self or receive judgment of self by somebody else, uh-uh. You can't, you can't be here. We don't, I don't like it. We don't like it. We don't like it. We don't like it. Um, we know how everything is supposed to be. We know how people are supposed to be. Um, and when they don't meet our high expectations, our very high and exact expectations, we are disappointed and saddened. We don't like it. We're getting really dope cameos in this show. Cameo of her on Skype with Lil Rel. He plays Quentin, which is the uh, lawyer associate out in Chicago. Molly's going to be visiting Chicago possibly the next episode or next week in their universe. Um... And it was a really dope and cool moment to see code switching. What is code switching? White people do not say code switching, don't use code switching, you don't need to code switch. Why do black people code switch? And Let me go back. What is code switching? It's when black people gotta speak a certain way in front of a white person, especially a white person in authority who cutting the checks or providing an opportunity, versus we saw the Skype end with the white lady and it was just uh, Quentin and Molly talking to each other, just two black people. And they get black again, like their their diction changes, the words they say changes, the way they speak changes, they get a bit more comfortable, less uh, flavorless. Um, and why do we code switch? Because black people were, because of racism and, and oppression and all that good stuff we love talking about, uh, in order to survive, a better rate of survival is assimilation, liking to whiteness, being like whiteness, straightening the hair, speaking a little different, walking a little different, dressing a little different, just just really minimizing and, and hiding the good soul and funk and, and, and dopeness of your blackness so the whites don't get uncomfortable. Therefore, you get to keep your comfortable space to live better, assimilation. Um, so when the white lady get off the phone, that code switch happened, Quentin and Molly get to be a little black and comfortable with each other and they joke or whatever. We even see um, Lil Rel, the comedian, he goes, ooh, they might hear you. He, do, he, he does that slave voice real quick. Um, I have a great slave voice. Won't be performing it here or on this channel at all. Um, everybody doesn't need access to it. That's for, it's for a closeness that the internet quite can't provide. In her personal life, 
So we really get to see Molly struggling with the fact that she's alone and this single life is bothering her. Like she doesn't have the help that she needs. Sometimes you just need a man around the house to carry something big or hit a little spot or cook a little something or just that companionship that a lot of people really long for. Keep in mind, this is a conversation regarding specifically cisgender heteronormative people, the relations between uh, dating, love and everything, sex, everything in between can of course cross sexualities and genders. Um, but I will be speaking more so from that perspective, um, just following the universe of Insecure and my personal experiences. So Molly finally meets a dude by mistake because she wasn't really looking, she wasn't really interested, who fits her list of requirements. Good job, five year plan, responsible, caring, clean money. like. She has this list of requirements that she desires from this imaginary partner in her mind. And when someone actually comes along and, and fits it, she still rejects him. I don't know. It's just something. Mm, it's just something off. Uh. As a Virgo, my energy is very important to me. So yes, you can be awesome on paper, but if I'm just not feeling it or if I find that one little thing I don't like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It just isn't. Her best friend Issa gets to call her out on it like, bitch, he's you. Uh. And I had been thinking this for a long time and I hadn't quite said it outright uh, concerning Molly that usually when someone is so rejecting, rejecting of every single person that might cross their intimate space and even her therapist, you see her rejecting all of her therapists. She's really fearful of someone coming into this intimate space and seeing her. That's very important because usually when someone is rejecting everybody else so much is because they're rejecting themselves. You can't accept somebody else when you don't accept yourself. And so now that Molly's come face to face with someone who's exactly like her, it's her standard. She is her own standard and she rejects that. I am hoping and praying that Molly doesn't get rid of the therapist that we've been seeing thus far. I love that therapist. Like, I want to see that therapist because I'm learning from her. And if the character Molly gets rid of that therapist, I will have a fight, a physical fight. I am swinging. And there's nothing that no one can do to stop me. And there's something this guy that Molly is hanging out with, there's something I don't like about him either. I just, I don't like the way like he moves or his mouth or like he purses his lips a little. I don't like it. Molly made the right decision. Okay, let's go on to Issa. Very last scene, very last episode two, hella confused, or excuse me, hella questions. We see her phone and she sends a DM trying to fuck. So now that we have Issa here, she's trying to go through her whole face. She never got access to her whole face because she met Lawrence too early. And she dived right into a super serious relationship, living together, building a future together. Um, so she skips off a whole phase and now that Lawrence is out of the way, she wants it back. Another beautiful cameo by the Luke James, R&B singer, fine, fine. Opened up for Beyonce at the Mrs. Carter World Tour, um, was dating Jesse J for a while. He's just fine. I couldn't be Issa Rae surrounded by all them fine celebrity men. Whole phase? Somebody said on Twitter, the whole face is supposed to end? Insert blinking gif. Whole face? Y'all would have heard about me in the industry. <laughs> Don't be putting Luke James in a trailer now on my set. <laughs> and so she joins Molly in trying to win at this whole face. So they go out. Shout out to the wardrobe department. Like everything is so detailed. Everything in everywhere of the show tells a part of the story from the wardrobe to the set design, to the lighting, to the shot angles, to the detail in the conversation, like e the hair, everything tells a, is part of the story. Like not one thing is slacking. It's so good. Um, so when we see Issa and Molly hit the club, start the whole phase, Issa is dressed like a soldier mixed with a white lady pilgrim from the 17th century. She is a mess. Her dress is guarded. Huge ballooning figure. 
can't see the body. You know, sometimes the people be like, leave something to the imagination. I imagine that a guy is sweating in anxiety of trying to figure out how to take the thing off. Buttons, zippers, patches, a collar? You covered your neck bone? Lisa, closed up. This is Issa, she's closed up. She's there, but she's not really there. And she only has a pop of fun at her feet. A little pop of red, passion, fun floral wedge with that heavy green, horrible dress. And this mirrors what Issa is feeling. So whole night doesn't work. Issa's back home alone and she is just, she just wants to feel like some sexual pleasure. Ladies alike, if you if you cannot find the batteries to your vibrator. Been there, done that. Um, it's one of the worst feelings. A really funny thing in this episode is that Issa's t-shirts mirror like her actual experiences and like what she's going through. So when she can't find the battery, she can't masturbate and just get like this quick little thing out or off. I don't know. She's wearing a t-shirt that says, huh, make America gyrate again. So I found out that the rapper on Issa's shirt is Shock G, who I also did see this video, but I didn't make the connection because I was so young and I was so touched a long time ago. He's a rapper that made the song, do the hump de hump, uh, do the hump de hump. She's trying to hump. She's trying to hump. And this is the problem. Um, and her drawers are on fire. Catch that? That ass on, that ass, she ready. She's hot. But she sees Eddie. Her neighbor, Eddie, who, his head. Um, he's like, if you're going to go through a whole phase, you went for the most regular... That was a bad choice. And maybe because, I don't know, like she doesn't feel comfortable with like complete strangers, some dude off the internet, or Luke looked intimidating because he's so beautiful and fine. And she went for basic, no around the way dude, Eddie. Yo, the shape of his head, bruh. Somebody on Twitter was like, Eddie looks like a weed dealer with the leaning socks. And then I was watching it and I saw his socks. And I remembered that I hate when guys have sex with socks on. Those huge white cotton tube socks bouncing them feet up and down bad choice ew i would have never let that nigga touch me nope <laughs> no no and Issa's not the type to get warmed up she be going straight for dick you going straight for deepest penetration position first it's just not realistic and i like the song they were playing uh i don't know the artist, but I know the original song that he was using in like this remix and it's a Vaughn song. I know you wanna love, I know you wanna touch, I know you wanna feel, so baby keep it real, I know you wanna be. Like good old R&B. I think that was from like maybe like early 2000s when Avant was real hot, real cute. That song is so good, but it wasn't Avant. It was some next dude using it as a sample. Y'all sampling songs from 2000? Shit, we don't stand a chance. I'm old. And another mirror tea is that um, Issa has sex with Eddie for God, whatever reason. I don't know. And she wears a shirt that says wrecked. And she gets up with the wreck tee with holes in it and her hair, the after sex hair where your hair is just messy and uncombed and she just got wrecked. Y'all nasty. Okay, real quick, last note. I am going to end uh, Issa's job. I'm having a hard time caring about Frida. I don't care what she wants. I don't care that she's upset. I don't care that she wants more Latin kids in the black in, in the We Got Child program. Like for some reason, I want her to shut up. I want for you to shut up. I don't care. And it's not that I don't care about like the cause that she's mad at. Like, yeah, Latin kids should be in this great We Got Child program because they're just as disadvantaged and they need to learn and they need to have good things. But the fact that it's coming from Frida's face. My thing is like, okay, you're mad at Issa for not checking the principle for being problematic. Nigga, you're a whole ass adult white woman. Tell him. And I don't, like, is she not telling him because she thinks it's gonna negatively affect her and Issa's program? Is she not taking charge? I don't, I don't even have a 
reason. Like, why, if you want something done, why not do it? Why are you so mad that Issa isn't, like, doing the thing that you want? Like, I don't, I don't get that. That's weird. Like, this problem of this, this prejudiced black principle against Latin kids with Frida wanting the thing to be right. Like, it's so layered. It's so layered I'm, like, really trying to wrap my mind about it. It's like, is this black privilege? Issa feels like, okay, this is a win for us right now. <clears throat> we'll get to the Latin kids later. To me, that was a very important line because this is something that we often hear from white feminists. We got Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. We have The Beguiled starring an all-woman cast. We have Max Fury Road with Charlize Theron as the hero woman. We have Elsa as Frozen. Women are leading and black and brown women are like, Y'all mind if we get a piece? Can we lead to? Can we also be attended to? Because we have issues of being a woman also mixed in with like classism, poverty, race. Like there's so many other issues that we'd like to attend to. A white woman are like, shh, shut up. Once we win, you'll win. Just wait your turn. And this is what Issa is telling her white coworker Frida. Like once we get in good with like the black kids and we get this platform that we've been working so hard at, then we'll get to you and it's like it doesn't ever work out that way so Issa's being a problem the principal is being the problem Issa a black woman telling the white woman be quiet we're going to get this win this way first and then maybe I'll listen to you later a black woman telling that to a white woman and I was looking at I don't know why I didn't notice this before but the we got y'all tea I thought it was just minimalism where they just wanted something simple, logo, whatever, but it's a white hand, a big white hand holding tiny black children. <laughs> the white hand is supporting the black kids and using a black slang in the logo, we got y'all, to do it. Um, I never broke that logo down. I've never like noticed that that logo is important. If you see Issa's boss, it's a white woman and her office is decorated and covered in African art, statues, paintings, memorabilia, um, just African art pieces. She even she even had like a Native American like culture poster up there in the corner somewhere. And just really pointing out how white people suck on cultures of other of other nations and and, and cultures of color. Um, to feel like they're either the savior, or they're appreciating, or they're down and woke. That we got y'all to is like centering how the white hand is helping you little black babies. We're helping you. We got y'all. Is that how you guys speak? <laughs> how clever. It's all really, really clever. And the white boss is patting Issa on the back for being great while the white co-worker is mad at Issa for not further helping other brown kids. It's a lot. That's about it. That is it for this review. Um, Insecure is banging, popping. I'm, I, lo I love the show. I can't say anything more about it. Make sure you guys subscribe, turn on your notifications, leave me comments about what you thought about episode three. And um, I'll see you guys next time with another video. Broken Bougie out. Hey guys, welcome to the Justice Sasha channel. I have new videos right here every Tuesday and every Thursday. Please follow me on all of my social media and feel free to check out my last video. For everything else Justice Sasha, such as vlogs, events, and my comedy web series, head on over to JusticeSasha.com.